some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by these gentlemen. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. Some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had a Q&A session. One college student asked the following, explain the universe and give three examples. To tell the truth, explaining the universe is the easy part. Here it is in one sentence. As I mentioned in the scripture snapshot of Genesis, the universe is the temporary stage that God built on which history's great love drama would be enacted. When the love story reached its completion, the stage will be replaced. Let me read what H.C. Hewlett says about this in discussing Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. This is his beautiful little book, The Glories of Our Lord. He writes, The eternal majesty of our Lord shines out brightly in Hebrews 1. The heavens are the works of his hands, and though they perish, he remains, the same yesterday and today and forever. However, it's not only that our beloved Savior is the maker of the starry host, not only that he upholds everything by the word of his power, it's also true that when the heaven shall wax old as does a garment, and he shall fold them up as a vesture and they shall be changed, he himself will abide unchanged and unchangeable. What is the majesty, listen to this, what is the majesty of such a being who puts on a universe for the accomplishment of his purposes and then puts it off again, changing it as we might a garment. What an amazing savior and friend is this lover of our souls. But now the second part of the question to give three examples of the universe, that took a little more thinking. But here they are as I gave them to the questioner. Number one, God, the Creator, is illustrated by the creation. In Romans 1, verses 16 to 20, Paul explains that the visible universe exemplifies the invisible God. Everyone is without excuse when it comes to knowing God, because as Paul says, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Number two, the spiritual realm is illustrated by the first creation. The Lord Jesus often said, the kingdom of heaven is like and then he would use a seed to illustrate the word of God or a merchant seeking beautiful pearls to show himself seeking people he would treasure. Wind was like the spirit, various kinds of soil like people's hearts and fishing like evangelism. The whole world to the Lord Jesus was a rich palette full of colorful ways to teach us about the wonderful spiritual kingdom which he's setting up in the hearts of those who believe. Number three, the present creation points to the new heavens and earth. Peter is thinking of this when he writes in 2 Peter 3, since all these things will be dissolved, what kind of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So there it is. The universe's role is to provide a place where God is wooing his creatures to trust him. He's using the physical world to introduce himself as the wise and mighty maker of all and points us beyond this world to spiritual truths and to the wonderful world to come.